Good morning. Sorry I'm late. This is one of those those days. Oh gosh, what is that up there? Let me get that out of the way. Mm. Okay. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Although the devil is busy, so am I. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you for joining me today. Although I am running a little late. Hallelujah. Father, I come before you in the name of Yeshua the Messiah. And I rebuke every attack of Satan in the name of Yeshua. God, I thank you for this day. I thank you for waking me up this morning, allowing me to come to Facebook again. God, I thank you for all your goodness, Lord. I thank you for how you washed over me last night and protected me from all hurt, harm, and danger. I thank you, Father, for waking me up with a sound mind and a good spirit. Hallelujah. God, I give you praise, honor, and glory. God, I bless you, and I bless your son, your short Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ. And God, thank you for loving us so much that you sent your best gift, you sent your first begotten son that died and you raised him from the dead three days later that we could have life and we could have it more abundantly. God, I thank you for your grace, for your grace is sufficient for every need. God, I thank you for your long suffering, oh God, how you long suffering with us, God, how you give us time after time to repent. God, I pray that you bless each and every one that might come to Facebook today, that you will bless them in a special way. Father, bless every church that's open in the name, in your name, or your name of your dear son, your short Messiah. God, let there be a word from you today, O oh God, that will encourage, that will break every bondage, that will bring forth repentance. And that the dead will come back alive, O oh God, in the name of Yeshua. God, I pray, O oh God, that you bless those who are sick, O oh God, that you will have mercy. God, I pray that you bless those in the jails and in the nursing home, O oh God. Those who haven't opened back up, God, free them to open up their places again, that people can come to service and hear a word from you. And God, even though those who are not open yet. God, I pray people are seeking you, O oh God, that they are reading your word, O oh God, because we know your word is powerful. And we know Yeshua is the word that came forth in the volume of the book to do your will. God, help us to do your will today. God, I ask you to let the Holy Ghost fall upon me. Not my will, but thy will be done. God, put a word in my mouth, O oh God, for the people that will come to listen today, not to hear me, but will hear from you. God, I love you. I love your dear son. I love the Holy Ghost. And God, I give you praise. In the name of Yeshua, amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you all for joining me. Uh, today kind of had a, a slow start. I had put out the subjects out there on Facebook. And right when I put everything out there, and it says, tag people. So I tag one person. And then it says, add to your post. I go, I don't want to add to my post. Then it had, uh, share your feelings. So I had did that. Then the phone froze. It would not do anything. So I had to cut my phone off, restart it again. Then when I get ready to... Uh, get started. I dropped my mouse. It hit on the floor. The batteries, the batteries flew out. I said, "Okay, God, that means you have something for your people today." He always has something for his people. But when Satan try to hinder you, that means something is going on that he do not want us to be aware of. Hallelujah! So what I had put out there on Facebook as a subject, I also posted out there on my page. Uh, but first of all, just in case we have anybody out there that has not been adopted into the family of God, that the family of Yahweh, the Bible teaches us how we're justified by our faith and we believe on God and believe that God raised his son, Yeshua the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ, from the dead. We're justified by our faith. 
Then the Bible teaches us where to confess that which we believe. When you go to Romans chapter 10, verse 9 through 10, it says, If we confess with our mouth the Lord Yeshua and believe in our hearts that God has raised Yeshua, the Lord Jesus Christ, from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For out of the heart men continue to believe unto righteousness, and confession is made unto salvation. Romans 10 and 13, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Uh, Mark 16, 16, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. 1 John 1 and 9, if we confess our sins, he faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Proverbs 28, 13, he that confesses and forsakes his sins shall have mercy, but he that confesses and forsakes not his sin will not prosper that the goodness and mercy of God he want us to be justified by our faith the same way our father Abraham was justified Abraham believed on God and it was credit to him for righteousness but that's not the end of the story the Bible says when Abraham put work with his faith that's when he was made complete that's when he was made perfect Show us the same thing. It doesn't cost us anything to be adopted out of the world into the family of God, but faith. But once we are adopted out of the world into the family of God, it's going to cost us something to live for God. That's why we go through those steps. It's going to cost you something to live for God. If we think we can just come into the family of God and sit down and faint and we don't have to do anything, we do not need to do anything because of these lying spirit, we would never make it all the way in through that door. So it's not just for me to, to come and get people adopted into the family of God. That's why I go through the step to show people how to be adopted into the family of God. Because I know we can't run that race until we get in the race. So I always try to get a person into Yeshua the Messiah just in case they are not in there. And then try to teach them the ways of the Lord. And that means we, in order for us to know the ways of the Lord, we need to get into our Bibles, as we said before, and study the Word of God. So what we're going through again today, bless all the readers and hearers of the word of this prophecy. Provide it. Provide it. And we're going to look at this word provide it because it's so important. And I'll cover it as I go forward. A good report and a good revelation and confession. Father, give us a spirit of wisdom and revelation. Now, as we said before, we've been posting out these, uh, posting these scriptures out there for some time. And the reason we're doing this, we're hoping people will get a hunger and study and search out the word of God for themselves. It's not enough to just read the Word of God. It's time for us to start studying the Word of God. Although we are coming out of the book of Revelation, we will not get that far, but we will continue in Revelation because like yesterday, when I came to start studying for this uh, this morning, I thought I was just going to go through the book of Revelation, uh, chapter number 1. The Lord give me many scriptures to support a verse that we are covering. So that's what we're going to do today. This is how we search the scripture because the Bible encourages us to search out the word of God. And so in order to get a good understanding of God's word is to search out more information that deal with the subject that you are studying or deal with the verse that you are reading because many times we can read one verse and we can misunderstand that whole verse so what happened if i read a verse and i do not get understanding of that verse i can misinterpret the scriptures so that's why it's so important to read and study the word of god by looking for more information as we go forward so again, these are what we what we're going to cover. Just in case I don't get that far in this chapter today, the revelation God gave to His Son. Always remember, 
It takes someone to do what? Give. So we know again, a revelation is something that was previously concealed and now being revealed by Yeshua the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ. Other words, God gave to his son, Yeshua the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ, a revelation. And Yeshua took that revelation and he showed it to who? To his servant, John. So bless of the reader and the hearers of the word of this prophecy. The Bible teaches us how we are blessed when we read it and hear it. But most of all, we need to study it. So again, bless of the readers and hearers of the word of this prophecy, provided they obey the things written in it, for the time is near. Well, we know people have been saying that, as they say, for years and years and years. It's near. The Messiah is coming back soon. Get your ducks in order and so forth. Well, guess what? It's getting nearer and nearer. And he will be coming back. But guess what? I always say this. Even if he come back for me today, that's the end of my world. So my concern is not to just be about when is he going to come back, when God is going to send him back. Because remember, Yeshua said no one know when he's coming back that he does not even know. He said, no one know when he's going to return but his father. And so I'm to be concerned about when he's going to return for me. Yes, this world will end one day. But if I die right now, that's the end of my world. And so the time is near for me because I'm 75 years old. So I'm getting older and older and older. So I'm nearer for him to come back to me than when I was 10 years old. So I'm getting closer and closer and closer. And you can say the same because no one is going to live forever. But yes, one day this world will end. So obey the, it says provided again, they obey the things written in it. For the time is near. Give a spirit. God, give a spirit of wisdom and revelation. Well, we know many times we can read the word of God, but do we get wisdom? A good report. And so we're going to look at a good report. Here, here's a true son of Israel. That's a good report. Here's a true son of Israel, nothing false in him. Well, we're going to expound on these again as we go forward. But just think about that. That is a good report. When we leave here, this world, do we want to have a good report or a bad report? We can have a good report while we are alive, and we can have a good report when we are deceased. Many times, a person may have a bad report while they are alive, and then when they are deceased, everybody want to say something good about them. They get up there and just lie like crazy. But when they was alive, they had nothing good to say. So you want, and I do, a good report while I am alive and a good report when I am deceased. But if someone give a bad report and it is a lie, that's okay. Because I'm concerned about my good report from the Lord. People can say anything they want about me as long if it's bad and it's not true. If it's good and they say it's bad and it's not true, why should I worry about it? Because I'm to be a what? A pleaser of God more than a pleaser to men. So a good report, a good revelation. Again, we'll cover that as we go forth. So we're starting out in the chapter, Revelation chapter 1. Now, as I said, we might not get that far in this chapter, but if it be the Lord's will, we'll go through the whole chapter because we'll use many verses, but what I do when the Lord have me studying, he give me cross-reference, but I always bring back that last verse to take us into the chapter of Revelation. 
So in Revelation chapter 1, if you have your Bibles and you would like to follow, as I said, I will post these scriptures out there. So in Revelation chapter 1, I'm reading from Complete Jewish Bible, and I will use other translation as well. Now, if you want to use your translation, that's fine when you go back and study. I tell people where they can go to any Christian website. I use BibleGateway.com. So if you say you use King's James, pull up King's James, and you can pull up the Complete Jewish Bible. You can pull up AMP. You can pull up New King James Version. You can pull up many translations side by side and compare them. And so again, Revelation chapter 1. Now notice what is happening here. This is the revelation which God gave to himself? No. This is the revelation which God gave to Yeshua the Messiah, Jesus Christ. In other words, God gave Yeshua this revelation because again, a revelation is something that was what? Previously concealed and now being revealed. So when God reveals something to Yahshua, now Yahshua is going to reveal it to someone else. So again, this is the revelation which God gave to Yahshua the Messiah, Jesus Christ. So that he gave it to him for a purpose. When God gives us a revelation, people, it is for a purpose. This is not just for us. Sometimes it may be for us for a while. But whatever, remember what Yeshua said, whatever I have spoken to you in the dark, speak ye on the housetop. That let us know we're in nothing, because he said nothing should be hidden. It could be hidden for a while as he said to Daniel, uh, these things are going to be hidden. But then he manifests. So he, he can tell us something in secret. And it might not be for us to just rush out and say, tell someone else. But there will come a time that he want us to reveal those things that was hidden, but now it's revealed, so it's okay for us to reveal it to someone else. So let me read the whole, whole verse. This is a revelation what God gave to Yeshua the Messiah so that he could show his servant. What must happen very soon? Notice it's not that he could show his servant. It's an S there. That means his servant because he had many servants. He, it wasn't just John. Uh, so that he could show his servant what must happen very soon. He communicated it by sending his angel to his servant John. Well, remember... Yeshua is also called an angel. Now, I'm not saying this angel is Yeshua, but you got to remember, God gave it to Yeshua to show to his servant, John, and he communicated it by sending his angel. Well, remember, I'll send my angel before you. It said he sent his angel to his servant, John, who bore witness. In other words, we know John bore witness. Who bore witness to the word of God. John bore witness to the word of God. And to the testimony of Yeshua the Messiah as much as he saw. In other words, the things that, John, that was revealed to John, the word of God, and the testimony of Yeshua the Messiah... John did not just keep it to himself. He bore witness to the word of God. Well, many times we know the word of God, but we will not bear witness to the word of God. Sometimes we have the testimony of Yeshua the Messiah, but we might not confess or bear witness to Yeshua the Messiah. So whatever John saw, he bore witness to that. Revelation of Yeshua. I'm reading Romans 16, verse 25. Romans 16, verse 25. Complete Jewish Bible. Now to God, who can strengthen you according to my good news. Well, think about that. Do you know God's word strengthen us? Sometimes we feel weak. 
But when we receive God's word and give us strength, sometimes we feel like we can't do anything. But when we receive the word of God, it strengthens us. Remember what Paul says, when I'm weak, then am I strong. So sometimes we feel weak and we can even be weak in our bodies. But we can be what? Strong in our spirit. That's where we need to be strong is in our spirit. So if my spirit is strong, even my body feels stronger. Have you heard someone say, I'm in pain and I know I'm in pain? But I can't even feel the pain because the strength takes away the pain. Kind of reminds me years ago, and I mentioned this some time ago, when I was uh, doing JM ministry in Texas, I dropped, picked up a VCR, and I remember I dropped it on my foot. And boy, talking about pains, I saw stars all over. And so I heard in my spirit, Go put your uh, your foot in water as warm, as hot as you can bear. Some people said cold, but I heard hot. I put my foot in that water, and that water was hot, and I soaked it for a long time. And so what I had said in my spirit, I won't be able to go to the jail tomorrow because my foot has hurt me so bad I can't stand. I won't be able to stand. And I heard in my spirit, the devil is a lie. You will go to the jail and you will be able to stand. Do you know the next morning I got up, put on my shoe, and went to the jail. Now I left, went to church. Then I left the church. I went to the jail, left the jail, went out to dinner. I think it was probably like 8 o'clock in the morning I left. I didn't get back home till after 6 or whatever. Do you realize I did not feel the pain when I got home? And I took off my shoe. I said, my God, I didn't feel the pain all day. That's when I felt the pain. So the pain was there. I just couldn't feel it. And so that let us know when we believe the word of God, it strengthened us. See, many times people even die before their own time. They say, I'm, di- I'm going to die. And because you said you was going to die, you die. Because you're justified by the words you speak. You're condemned by the words you speak. So what happened? I changed my words. And when I changed my words, that's what gave me strength. So let me finish the whole verse. Now to God who can strengthen you according to my good news in harmony with the revelation of the secret truth, which is the proclamation of Yeshua the Messiah. Right there we see the revelation is about Yeshua the Messiah and it was the hidden truth from the foundation of the world. So again it says, I'm going to finish the uh, the verse. Now to God who can strengthen you according to my good news and harmony with the revelation of the secret truth, which is the proclamation of Yeshua the Messiah, kept hidden. And silent for ages and ages. AMP. Now to him who is able to establish and strengthen you in the faith. There it is. We've been speaking about this for a long time. We need to be strengthened in our faith. We came out of the last book we came out of was the that little book of Jude. If you have not studied that book, please do so. And so that's what took us into Revelation chapter number one. And so it says, according to my gospel, again, good news, and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery, that mystery that was hidden from the foundation of the world, for the plan of salvation, which has been kept secret for long ages past. Well, it was kept secret from when? The foundation of the world. Galatians 1 and 12. Complete Jewish Bible. Because neither did I receive it from someone else. Remember Paul. Because neither did I receive it from someone else, nor was I taught it. It came through a direct revelation from Yeshua the Messiah. 
And so many times we can't teach people in a way to get a revelation. It needs to come directly from God or from Yeshua the Messiah as Peter got his revelation when he said, Thou art the Messiah, the Son of the living God. He received that revelation that made him solid as a rock. God give a spirit of wisdom and revelation. That coming from Ephesians 1, 16 through 23. Again, reading from Complete Jewish Bible. Again, Ephesians 1, 16 through 23. Have not stopped giving thanks for you in my prayers. I keep asking. Watch what he's asking for. In my prayers, I keep asking that God of our Lord Yeshua the Messiah, the glorious Father, to give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation. See, remember, there are spirits, as we said, when you read Revelation, you're going to speak of seven spirits. So here he's praying that God would give us a spirit of wisdom and revelation. Well, wisdom, remember what the Bible said, get wisdom, get knowledge, but above all, get understanding. Wisdom is to be wise, to make wise decisions. And revelation is when he revealed things to us. Began revelation is something that was previously concealed and now being revealed by the Lord Yeshua, the Messiah. And he tell us why. He says, so that you will have full knowledge of him. In other words, we can have full knowledge of him. That doesn't mean we're going to know everything in the Bible. But when it comes to Yeshua... We can have full knowledge of him. It says, I pray. That's verse 18. I pray that he will give light to the eyes of your hearts. Think about your hearts need to have eyes. Well, you know your heart doesn't have eyes like our eyes, but our heart should be able to see. So that's why he said, I pray that he will give light to the eyes of your hearts. That we would be able not only to see with our two eyes, but we can see clearly with our hearts. So that you will understand the hope to which he has called you. Do we understand the hope to which he has called us? What rich glories there are in the inheritance he has promised his people. Notice again, we was looking in the book of Jews, using different references, where it speak of his people. Well, remember again, God is the God of the living, not the God of the dead. So if I'm in Yeshua, the Messiah, I am his people. But if I'm not in Yeshua, the Messiah, I am Satan's people. You say, what are you, you saying? Because the scripture says again, he, although he loved the world, everyone, but he's the God of the living, not the God of the dead. He's the God of the spiritual living, not the God of the spiritual dead. The same thing. It says, verse 19, And how suppressantly great is his power working in us, who trusts him? Working in us. How great is God's power working in us who trust him? But God's power works in the one that trusts him. That's why, again, Paul had hope in God and, and he believed the resurrection of the Lord Yeshua the Messiah. It works with the same mighty strength he used. When he worked in the Messiah to raise him from the dead and set him at his right hand in heaven. So what is it saying? The same power that God used to raise Yeshua from the dead, 
that same strength should work in us, that same power should work in us to raise us from a spiritual death. Because when we're in the world, we're born in the world, we're spiritually dead. Although we have life, but we're spiritually dead. But when we're in Yeshua the Messiah, it gives us life. So his word is what? Power. Let me finish that. When he worked in the Messiah, see God worked through the Messiah. God works through me. I hope you can say God is working through you. But in order for God to work through us, we might, we must be in Yeshua because God is going to work through Yeshua the Messiah so the Messiah can work through us. Let's finish that verse. When he worked in the Messiah to raise him from the dead and set him at his right hand in heaven. Remember, Yeshua is sitting on his throne on the right hand of his father. And we are made to sit on thrones in, uh, on the right hand of Christ. It says, for above every ruler, president, pope, lawyers, anybody you want to name. For above every ruler, authority, power, dominion, or, let me just go down. Or any other name that can be named either in the world or in the world to come. Because Christ is more powerful than any other ruler, authority, dominion, or any other name that we can name. More powerful than the devil. Hallelujah. We give the devil too much power. Like I said this morning, the devil is busy, but don't give him no glory. Hallelujah. Uh, verse 22. And he has put all things under his feet. God put all things under the feet of Yeshua the Messiah, Jesus Christ. And made him head over everything for the Messianic community. So again, God have put Christ the Messiah. He's putting his enemy under his foot and told Christ uh, he would put his enemy under his feet. And made him the head. Other words, Yeshua is the head of those who are in him, which is his body. 23. Which is his body. The full expression of him who fills all creation. Give heat. Give heat. Listen carefully to what is said. Give heat. Listen careful to what is said. Pay close attention to what is said. Consider what is revealed before you. Hebrew 2, give heat. For this reason, that is, because of God's final revelation in his son Yeshua, and because of Jesus' superiority, superiority to the angel, we must pay much close attention than ever to the things that we have heard. Don't miss that. We must pay much closer attention than ever to the things that we have heard, because faith comes by hearing, so that we do not in any way, drift away from truth. That's AMP. N notice what it said. Why should we pay close attention to what we hear? Close attention to what we read. Uh, close attention and consider what we hear. Consider what we are reading. So we will not drift away. We're well, right there. A lying spirit say you can't go away. That is a lying spirit. Let me tell you that. Because he's encouraging us to take heed. Take notice. Pay attention. Consider what is being revealed. Consider what is said so you won't drift away. Well, why does people drift away? Because they're listening to lying spirit. That's why. 
people that stand on the truth, know the truth, confess the truth, hold on to the truth, will not drift away. But if they're holding on to a lie, deception, that exactly what happened. 1 Peter 1.13, Complete Jewish Bible. Therefore, and watch this, if you don't want to drift away from the truth, if you want to drift away, drift away from the lie. But if we do not want to drift away from the truth, what do we need to do? Therefore, get your minds ready for work. That means start working your mind. You know, we work with our hands, but we need to work with our mind. How do you work with your mind? By studying the Word of God. That's why Paul said he was the last one, but he worked harder than all the others. You notice that? He wrote more books than all the others. He worked harder, although he was last, but he became one of the powerful disciples. Therefore, get your mind ready for work. Keep yourselves under control. Not that God is going to keep you under control. Not that God is going to keep me under control. Not that Yeshua is going to keep me under control. Not that Yeshua is going to keep me under control. I need to keep myself under control. Listen to what it says. Read the whole thing. Therefore, get your mind ready for work. Keep yourself under control and fix your hope fully on the gift you will receive when Yahshua the Messiah is revealed. Notice that. We will receive a gift when Yahshua the Messiah is revealed to us. That's that revelation that was hidden and now being revealed. King James Version. Hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation. See, there it is. At the revelation of Jesus Christ. Remember the revelation God gave to his son, Yeshua the Messiah, Jesus the Christ. Blessed are the readers. Well, remember some time ago, I think I covered some verses in Revelation how for years... People would say, do not read the book of Revelation. It in code, you will not understand. When I started really studying my Bible, or no, really reading it, I started with the book of Revelation. Why? Because people were saying you couldn't understand it. So it was in code, do not read it. And so when I came across this verse, that if I read it and listen to it, I'm blessed. So I didn't understand it that well, but I knew I was blessed if I read it. So that was the first book that I actually read. It said, blessed are the reader and the hearers of the word of this prophecy provided. Well, I remember what I said. Many times people would just say, bless the reader and hearers of the word of the prophecy. But they miss provided. That's why a certain translation doesn't say provided, but it might say keep. So it means the same thing. So he said, provided they obey the thing. See, it's not enough just to read it and hear it. We need to obey it. So let's look at the whole verse. Blessed are the readers and hearers of the word of this prophecy, provided they obey the things written in it. For the time is near. So when we read it, we hear it, we need to receive it, and we need to obey it. In other words, we are not blessed. So that's why I said, blessed are the hearers and readers of the word of this prophecy, provided they obey the things written in it, for the time is near. Provided they obey the things written. This word is so powerful if we search it out. 1 Corinthians 7.39. 1 Corinthians 7.39, complete Jewish Bible. And we're looking at this word provided. A wife is bound to her husband as long as he lives. 
But if the husband dies, she is free to marry anyone she wishes. Now, right there, if someone just stopped there, they'll make a big mistake. A wife is bound to her husband as long as he lives. But if the husband dies, she is free to marry anyone she wishes, provided. See, now that changed the meaning. Provided he is a believer in the Lord. Provided he is a believer in the Lord. So if you're married or been married and your wife or your husband died. Now if you didn't have the knowledge, that's a different story. Because we are held accountable for what we know and what we just choose not to know. So that's why we are to get the revelation of God's word so we will not keep stumbling over the truth. So once we know the truth, there's no more excuse. No more. If you, the baby did not know something was wrong, you do not spank them or beat them like the Bible says, he that uh, spares the rod hates his child. So if the child doesn't have knowledge, you do not spank them. But once they have knowledge, that's a different story. So if we did not know certain things, and we did certain things, all sins shall be forgiven man except blaspheme of the Holy Ghost. But just in case we know, that's a different story. So again, provided he is a believer in the Lord. So why is it saying this? If I'm married to a believer, and that believer died, I am free to marry another believer, not a unbeliever. Why? Because that unbeliever can pull you out before you can pull him in. Now, if you're married to an unbeliever, that's why the Bible says you are to stay with them because you can't what? You can like convert them. But you do not just say, I'm a Christian. I love the Lord with all my heart. And then you go out there and you just marry anybody, a worldly person. You're not to do that. You are to marry a believer. 1 Corinthians 15, 2. So that's why you don't miss provided. 1 Corinthians 15, 2. And by which you are being saved, provided. You keep holy fast to the message I proclaim to you, for if you don't, your trust will have been in vain. Right there again, I use that scripture out of Corinthians many times because it's so powerful. How some people say, I'm saved. You're being saved. You could be saved out of Egypt. You could be saved out of the world. But we're still in the process of being saved from some stuff. Or we should be. Because you're saved out of Egypt, that does not mean you're saved from all the garbage in your life. I'm not saved from all the garbage that said was once in my life. I'm still being saved. That's why I need revelation. That's why I need the word of God. So the word of God can teach me what is not right in his sight. And I can be saved. That word means delivered from this stuff. So again, and by which you are being saved, provided you keep holding fast. Don't just hold fast for today and tomorrow or next year. You hold fast for the rest of your life. You do not let it slip. It said, by which you are being saved, provided you keep holding fast to the message I proclaim to you. For if you don't, he let us know. Your trust will have been in vain, which means useless. We are running a race in vain. Hebrews 3.6. But the Messiah, as a son, was faithful over God's house. Notice, it didn't say Yeshua was faithful over his house. We are the house of God. Yeshua is the head of our house. But when it, we, we leave here, the end of the world, Yeshua is going to submit himself back to his father, that God will be all in all. So again, Hebrew through 6, complete Jewish Bible. But the Messiah which is Christ, as son, he is a son, was faithful over God's house. And we are that house of his. Notice. And we are that house of his. That's why we are the house. And we are not to destroy this house, this building, 
is going to dust, but my spirit that's in this house will be saved someplace for eternity. <coughs> Excuse me. And we are that house of his provided. There it goes again. <coughs> provided we hold firmly to the courage and confident, inspired by what we hope for. Well, remember, we are hoping that we'll end up in heaven one day, right? <clears throat> we're to hold on to that. We're to have courage. We are, we are to encourage ourselves. We are to have confidence, inspired by what we hope for. Because you don't hope for what you do not have, what you have, you hope for what you do not have. We do not have heaven yet, because we're not there yet. <clears throat> we're hoping that we end up there one day. So I'm to be encouraged. I'm to have confidence and be inspired by what I'm hoping for, that when I leave this place, I'll go to a better place. So that's my hope, but I'm not there yet. So that's why I used the, uh, the word provided. We hold firm. Don't let it go. Do not let it slip. To the courage, confidence, inspired by what we hope for. Hebrews 3, 14, complete Jewish Bible. For we have become sharers in the Messiah. For we have become sharers in the Messiah. Provided, however, that we hold firm to the conviction we began with. Right through until the goal is reached. So we have shares in the Messiah. Just like you have shares in a will. Hebrews 11.40. King James Version. God having provided some better things for us. That they without us should not be made perfect. Showing us <clears throat> that word perfect. We are to be made perfect. We are to be made complete. Right there, I lost somebody probably. Because Yahshua says, Be ye perfect for your Father in heaven is perfect. You can have a perfect heart. David had a perfect heart. Solomon had a perfect heart for a while <laughs> until he did something wrong. So that means to be complete. That means you can have a perfect heart. It's just you'll never have a perfect flesh. So if you do not believe you can be perfect, do research on the word perfect and look how many people was perfect according to God. Now, you would never be perfect in a man's sight, so you do not even try. You try to be perfect in God's sight. You say, why should I try? Because if you don't try, you won't. That's why. Because we can do all things through Yeshua the Messiah that give us the strength. Satan is the one that tells us what we can't be, what we can't do, what we do not need to do. So who are we listening to? A lying spirit. Revelation 1 again. This is the revelation which God gave to Yeshua the Messiah so that he could show his servant what must happen very soon. He communicated it by sending his angel to his servant John. The revelation of Yeshua the Messiah, Jesus the Christ. This is the revelation of Jesus Christ. His unveiling, unveiling of the divine mystery which God the Father gave to him to show to his bond servants, believers, the thing which must soon take place in their entirety. And he sent and communicated it by his angel, divine messenger, to his bond servant John, who bore witness to the word of God and to the testimony of Yeshua the Messiah as much as he saw. Well, we expounded on that earlier, but as I said, as we go forward, I'll bring you back into it. So the first one I used was complete Jewish Bible, but then I came and I'm using uh, AMP. And so we are to reveal those things that are manifest to us. God want to give us a revelation the same way as Paul had a revelation. 
other people had revelation, which means revelation is revealing. That's why even uh, here it says, his revealing of the divine mystery. In other words, that divine mystery was Yeshua the Messiah hidden from the foundation of the world. And so what John saw, he heard, he bore witness to the word of God, not just the word of God, and to the testimony of Yeshua the Messiah. Complete Jewish Bible. Bless other reader and hearer of the word of this prophecy. Provided they obey the things written in it. For the time is near. Revelation 1-2. Who bore witness to the word of God and the testimony of Yeshua the Messiah as much as he saw. Who bore witness to the word of God and to testimony of Yeshua the Messiah? John. Revelation 12, 17. Revelation 12, 17. Complete Jewish Bible. The dragon was infuriated over the woman and went off to fight the rest of her children. Those who obeyed God's commandment and bear witness to Yeshua. Well, right there. We see the dragon say he would he wanted to destroy the woman. If you haven't read Revelation chapter 12, please do so because you can see that had to do with Yeshua. And because he couldn't destroy Yeshua, he goes after the woman. He couldn't destroy the woman. He goes after her children. Well, the same thing happened to us today many times. Satan will try to destroy you. If you do not allow him to destroy you, then he's going after your children. So that let us know we need to teach our children the way of the Lord. Because Satan is coming after them. That's why so many times people say, I don't know what happened to my children. I've been trying to live for the Lord all my life. I've been serving the Lord all my life. I'm in church. I'm constantly praying for them and, and praying that the Lord would deliver them because he's angry. He can't get you. So his target now is after your children. If he can't get your children, he's going after your other seeds. We could be your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren, because he's always working. That's why it's so important. Train up your child in the way that he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart because he are no right from wrong. He are no good from evil. And so it's good to start training your child up when they are young before they get indoctrinated by lying spirit. Because if they are not listening to God, they are listening to the devil. When we get old, if we are not listening to God, we are listening to the adversary, which is the devil who want to destroy our lives. Hallelujah. AMP, same verse, 12, 17. Revelation. So the dragon was enraged with the woman, and he went off to war, to wage war on the rest of her children. See, those who keep and obey the commandments of God and have the testimony of Yeshua, holding firmly to it and bearing witness to him. Isn't that powerful? Who, care, who keep and obey. That's who he after, God's commandments of God. I even had to correct one of my uh, minister friends, call no name, bear no blame. The other day we were talking, he said, well, Sister Neil, we know no one can really keep God's commandment. I go, what? Don't you ever let me hear that come out of your mouth again. I said, we can do all things through Yeshua the Messiah. Remember the young man said, I have kept them from my youth, and Yeshua told him he had something else to do. I said, don't let do not let that come out of your mouth again because my bible said blessed is he that keep the commandment and so i said every time you break one you confess agree with god is wrong and repent that's how you can keep them he said oh now i understand i didn't understand at first well that's how we keep them 
once he tell us they are, t let us know we're wrong and he's right, and we repent, it's just like you never did it. That's why he said, I cast out his forest to east it from the west, and I will not remember it anymore. So if he doesn't remember it anymore, why am I beating up on myself by some stuff I have done and I can't change? That's how we keep them. That's why he said, those who love me keep my commandments. Revelation 19.10, complete Jewish Bible. And we're going to stop on this verse. I fell at his feet to worship him. But he said, don't do that. I'm only a fellow servant with you and your brothers who have the testimony of Yeshua. Worship God. For the testimony of Yeshua is the spirit of a prophecy. That's how you know someone how the spirit of prophecy when they are worshiping God and they have the testimony of Yeshua the Messiah. Many of us have a testimony of everything but we have a testimony of what happened to us yesterday. We have a testimony of what happened to us 60 years ago. That's not the testimony you overcome with. You overcome when you have the testimony of Yeshua and the blood of Yeshua that would cleanse us from our sin if we confess and repent. I'm stopping at this verse, but I'm reading AMP, and that's where we're going to stop. It's be the Lord's will. I fell down at his feet to worship him, but he stopped me and said to me, you must not do that. I am a fellow servant. See, many times we are bowing down, worshiping man instead of worshiping God. You must not do that. I am a fellow servant with you and your brothers and sisters who have and hold the testimony of Jesus. Worship God alone. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. His life and his teaching are the heart of prophecy. Look at that again. His life, we are the teacher by his life. His teaching, that is the spirit and the heart of prophecy. You know, again, we can teach about everything in the Bible which I do. I go through all the Bible from Revelation, uh, from Genesis to Revelation. I teach all of that. But I also know if a person does not have the testimony of Yeshua the Messiah, Yeshua the Messiah will never testify of them. Going right back to Matthew. If, and what he said, if you testify of me, I testify of you. If you deny me, I will deny you. When Simon Peter said, Thou art the Messiah, the Son of the living God, he said, Thou art Simon Peter. Flesh and blood did not reveal that to you. It was my Father in heaven. So Simon Peter had a revelation of who Yeshua was. Revelation chapter 1 deal with the revelation God gave to Yeshua. And Yeshua gave it to his servant John. So if the Lord's will, we'll pick up with this chapter tomorrow night. So if you're free, please join us tomorrow night at nine o'clock Eastern time, eight o'clock central time. So we will continue with if, if it be the Lord's will, he might take me home. So if it is his will, hallelujah. Once again, just in case we have anybody out there that has not been adopted into the family of God, the Bible let us know how we can get into the family of God. Yeshua is the door. You cannot get to God without going through the door, which is Yeshua. That's why Yeshua said, no one cometh unto the Father but by me. So you must go through him. I can't get out of this office unless I go through the door. Now, when I go through the door, there's something outside that door. So Yeshua is the door. So in order for me to get to my father, I got must go through that door. And that door is Yeshua because I'm the way, I'm the truth, and I'm the life. Without me, you do not have a spiritual life. And so that's why we go through justification, how we are to be justified according to the word of God. You go right back and you study Romans chapter 4, Romans chapter 5 that teaches us 
how Abraham was justified by his faith. He believed God and it was credit to his account for righteousness. But always remember, he wasn't made perfect until he put work with his faith. Because the Bible said, work out your own salvation. Work out your own deliverance. So once I'm in Yeshua, it's credit to me for righteousness. And now I need to run this race. Because now I'm adopted into the family of God. Now I need to get to know God. I need to get no know, know Yeshua. That's why Yeshua teaches us in John 17 what life eternal is. That they might know, not believe. You got must you must move from believing to knowing some things. Other words, you'll keep going back and forth, back and forth. You must know, know something without a doubt. He said, This is life eternal, that they might know thee, you. The only true God, because there are God's many, but one true God. But he used the word in. In Yeshua the Messiah, Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Because Yeshua was sent to be the Savior of the world. He was sent. That's why he said, I didn't come on my own. My Father sent me. It takes someone to send. Which means I don't co do not come here on my own. He sent me. He sent me. So when you're sent, that is a commandment to go. When you're sent, that is a commandment to do something. Do not just be sent, but obey what I am sending you to do. Hallelujah. So when you go to uh, Romans 4 and 5, study those chapters. You're justified by your faith if we believe on God and we believe that God raised his son, you showed the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ from the dead. You're justified. But there are so many other things it's required for us to do. We're to get to know the word of God. And then you go to Romans chapter 10, verse 9 through 10. If we confess with our mouth, that means to speak, the Lord Yeshua, the Lord Jesus, and believe in our hearts. See, because we can confess a lot of stuff, but do not believe that in our hearts. Everything is established by two or more witnesses. What you speak, your heart needs to agree. Otherwise, it doesn't work. That's why it says, For out of the heart, man believeth unto righteousness, and confession is made unto salvation. You keep confessing until you are delivered from any unbelief. Then you go to Romans 10 and 13. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Well, that let us know that's for those of us who are in Yeshua because you can't call on who you don't know. So if I'm going through something, I can take those cares unto the Lord because he told me to bring all my cares unto the Lord for he cares for me. So if I call upon him and say, Lord, help me. Lord, deliver me. Lord, save me. Lord, free me. Lord, heal me. I must believe and be encouraged that he's going to do what I ask for because he said, you have not because you ask not. So while we're not delivered, we're not asking, or we really do not want to be delivered. That's why we're not delivered. Because if we are, are, are sincere that we want God to deliver us, he will. Because that's his power that's going to deliver us. But we, his word is power. So we need that word to deliver us. So God can tell us what is acceptable in his sight and what is not. And then you go to Mark 16, 16. He that believeth, he that continues to believe, and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not, he that does not continue to believe, will be saved. Damn. First John 1 and 9, if, say if it's there, if we confess our sins, agree with God that sin is sin, he's faithful and just to cleanse us from our sin. He, he faith and get, uh, faithful and just to forgive us of our sin and to cleanse us from what? All, not some, all unrighteousness. Goes right back to 20, Proverbs 28, 13. He that confesses, and forsake his sin shall have mercy. In other words, agree with God that sin is sin. Repent. And we see the mercy of God. But he that confesses and forsakes not his sin 
will not prosper. So that let us know is so important when we sin and come short of the glory of God. We are to agree with God that sin is sin and turn away. And that's when we see the mercy of God. He cleanses us by the blood of his dear son. Hallelujah. Uh, sorry if I uh, went a little, up a little today. Uh, it happens sometimes. But praise God. Thank you all for joining me. And I am going to post these scriptures here that have my document out there. Hoping someone will get a hunger and study the word of God. For now, uh, 26, 26 days, uh, we, been, we have been going through... Uh, the book of Proverbs, actually I'm sending it to people who I have on my phone on a list. And then I'm posting out, posting in that out there on Facebook as well from the Complete Jewish Bible. Please, if you have not read and studied the book of Proverbs, please do so. That is what you call a wisdom book. That's why the Bible says get wisdom. Solomon was a very wise man. That's why he wrote all those proverbs. He wrote all those songs because God gave him wisdom. Why? Because he asked for it. He said, give your servant an understanding heart. And because he asked for what he needed the most, the Lord told him he was going to give him that wisdom. He was going to give him that knowledge. He was going to have understanding. And there was no other king was going to exceed him with that wisdom and knowledge and understanding. Well, we know he, he got that wisdom, but later on he acted foolish. He married a lot of women and everything, so he was no longer perfect in God's sight. And that's why he lost all those tribes but one. That let us know we are to continue to get wisdom and knowledge. Because if we stop studying the word of God, we start losing that which we have. Remember, he that has, more will be given. He that has not, even that little he has, will be taken away. And so that's why we start to forget God's word. Because we stop reading and we stop studying. We are to keep being filled with the word of God. That's why the Bible said, be filled with the spirit. Yeshua said, my word, they are spirit and they are life. So every time I receive the word of God, I'm being filled with the word of God. But what happened? If I stop drinking water, I'm going to get thirsty and I'm going to be dry. So I need to, need it to keep me going, just continue to go in me so I would be wet. Hallelujah. Washed by the word of Yeshua the Messiah. Hallelujah. Thank you all once again for... Uh, coming on today, I pray I see some of you tomorrow and continue to study the word of God and be blessed in the name of Yeshua, the Messiah. Hallelujah. If you have a prayer request, if you have questions, you're welcome to post them out there. I will answer them through the Holy Ghost to the best of my ability. I know nothing but that which the Lord revealed unto me. Hallelujah. So I give him all glory. Hallelujah. Father, I come once again in the name of Yeshua the Messiah. Father, those who have not confessed your son, let them repeat after me if they have not confessed and even if they have doubt in their hearts. I confess with my mouth the Lord Yeshua, the Lord Jesus, and I believe in my heart that God raised Yeshua the Messiah, his son, from the dead. Hallelujah. God, search our hearts. If you find anything in our hearts that's not acceptable in your sight, Lord, wash us by the blood of Yeshua the Messiah. Cast it as far the east is from the west and let it never return back to me again. God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the washing of the word because your word washes us. Your word cleanses us. Your word purifies us. God, thank you for your word, oh God, because we know Yeshua is the word. It was written on his thigh, the word of God. Lo, I come in the volume of the book to do thy will, O God. So God, thank you for your word that helps us to do your will, that we could pray as Yeshua prayed. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. God, I pray that your will was done today. God, I ask you to bless each and every person out there today. God, soften our hearts, sharpen our ears. 
Anoint our eyes that we could see and we could hear and we will receive your word that your word will not continue to bounce off our hearts. Unharden our hearts. Give us a heart of flesh in the name of Yeshua. God, we continue to play for Ukraine. That, Father, that you would fight this battle for them. God, that they will overcome their adversary. God, bring Putin to repent and if he does not repent, Again, bring him down, O oh God, in the name of Yeshua. God, show him who have almighty power. Show him you do not stand for evil, you stand for good. And God, if any of us are saying you are in control of that, they are wrong. Because you cannot be tempted with evil, neither does you tempt any one man is tempted by his own desire. So God, thank you that your word teach us that these evil things are not of you, although you are all powerful. But in your word, things will happen because of evil, because of man desire. So God, let us have the desires to serve you, the desires to do your will, desires to love all mankind, because when we love all mankind, that is the fulfillment of the law. And God, thank you that your word teach us what we should do, oh no man, but one thing, and that is to love one another. For this thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, honor thy father and thy mother, and if any other commandment it is comprehended in this saying, namely, love workers no ill toward his neighbor, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. Father, help us to fulfill and not try to continue to destroy because your word is written and it's settled in heaven. Thank you for your word, O oh God, that cleanses our heart. God, I bless you and I give you praise. In the name of your holy son, your shoulder Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you all once again. God bless you all. Love you with the love of the Messiah. If the word of God is a blessing to you, please share. Hallelujah. And I will post these scriptures out. Give me around maybe five minutes. God bless you all. Have a wonderful day.